Green your webs, it's Jackie K. Welcome for another edition of Game and Chill. Let's be honest, this one might be a little bit shorter than typical, which would be like the ideal half hour length. Only because I'm recording this pretty much the first week of January. Cause it's my week off. I wanted to have like some time I wanted to get caught up on as much content as possible and just have it all taken care of. Sorry, I'm trying to like break my habits and actually like multitask properly. Actually have like talk about stuff while I'm talking with the villagers, but the moment I hear the animal knees, my brain kinda turns off with the commentary for some reason. Oh, wrong button. I know sleep was in town today, so first thing I wanna do is like get all I, there's n all the access grass. Even that doesn't quite sound ideal. And finally sell it. Like, I mean, I can't probably could use it for crafting, but let's be real, by the time I actually craft anything I need it, I'll have plenty more to go buy. Also, I need to donate you to the museum, Mr. Roly Poly Loly. So yeah, what was about that about being like a more focused but shorter game and chill? I think I kind of lost track of it. Oh yeah, Reef sells pumpkins now, and I never actually... I never got around to making pump- growing pumpkins in Halloween. Or October when they first were introduced. Could I actually grow them in the winter? One topic at a time, yeah. Like, I took... The work gave me New Year's Day off, and I wanted to watch Breakfast Stream today, so I decided to take the Monday and Tuesday off as well. So, it was a little longer of a weekend than I'm used to, like, if you... But I was gonna try to make up for it by... Just getting caught up on a whole bunch of content and all that. Where's the pumpkin start? I, I don't know if I'm gonna grill them today, but I figure I might as well at least... Get them in my inventory and all that. Okay, I just decided to start everything over because I got into a mind blank the moment I was trying to actually do the craft stuff and all. So I think we can commit to it. Like I haven't even cleaned up yet from the Christmas time. Like I wouldn't be it would be nice to have all these toys out and about like that, but uh, I gotta find a more nice place to do it. And considering like. Lately, unless I'm recording content, I don't really have too much reason to open up the game. That hasn't really been a high priority. Like, I got Pikmin 3 Deluxe for Christmas, and I haven't even opened up the package lately. This is why I don't buy video games anymore. It's not that I can't afford them. It's, unless I'm actually making content out of it, like, it's hard for me to even open up the freaking game and actually play it. But last, like, trying to little get a little bit on the topic of why I thought this might be a little bit shorter of a game and show compared to usual. I want to just like it's a long weekend, and part of my goal is to try to get as caught up or as ahead in my content creation backlogs as possible. But since it's streaming, like the only thing, dang it, Joy-Con drift. There's literally no reason for me to go that way. Whew, yeah, that's still an issue. All my favorite parts about Animal Crossing New Horizon in a 10 second clip. For your enjoyment. Anyways, I was talking about something, wasn't I? So, main goal was to try to just get as much done over this time frame as possible to kind of feel accomplished. Unfortunately, depression said otherwise. <laughs> I, I, I'm i always hesitant lately to say depression because, like, some people are actually diagnosed with it. And, like, I kind of feel like it's something I have, but I also don't want to take away from people who have it worse. And but pretty much, like, the day after New Year's, I... I think I said it somewhere else. It might just have been because I was up to 1am and my body woke me up 
early because that's what it's used to waking up at. No, I, I see. But I really didn't feel up to doing much of anything Friday. It was mostly just like drawing and sketching. Which is fine because like within like this first week of January I haven't even recorded much of anything yet. Or done much drawing besides that one day of sketching. I haven't even like done a full color drawing yet. But I'm tempted to like take... There's one of these sketches that I'll probably talk about on our block day. Loved so much I, I think I'm gonna want to try to make it a full color. I was mostly like... I was originally gonna work on a reference sheet. But I wasn't really feeling too motivated to actually do something creative with characters in that, so I mostly like spent the time trying to just practice some detailed drawings, because if you've been following my art, you may be able to tell that I have a bit more of a simplistic art style compared to most people who actually take art seriously. And I guess like part of it is like if I did the detailed stuff, I'd get better and better and it would come out better. But it's just hard for me to like keep to an art style that actually feels like me, while have it still be high quality. Like I can even consider like the si more simplistic stuff good, even though like it's on a different scale to compare to other art. I was trying to avoid that from happening so much, but the freaking lack of patience got the better of me. It probably isn't a golden slingshot, and at the end of the day, that's all I'm worried about. In fact, there's probably a way to check, because I don't think, like, you even can find the recipe for the golden slingshot. Until you, like, hit a certain number of balloons. Unfortunately, the game doesn't really make it too easy to, like, search that sort of stuff out. Mm-hmm, mm hmm Raining treasures, possibly, would be under... Please, game. Okay, so I have to, like, shoot down about 150 more presents, so far time away from that being an issue for anything in particular. But again, it was a sidetrack thing. Was, the whole drawing thing was there was a time frame that I wasn't really feeling motivated to do too much else, so I kind of just looked up some references and tutorials on drawing and just practiced them. And one of them came, a couple of them came out pretty good. One of them kind of just wanted like em, would love to like emulate into something more. And I think like at the very end of the day, I started working on a reference sheet. Since I'm talking about just how my weekend's been, anyways. Also for 2020, I. Start getting back into my planner, I'll admit. And like the back end of 2020, I just got so demotivated by life in general. That I kind of just gave up on the whole part of the planner where I just like make goals and accomplishments. And I just left the book blank. But I figured like New Year, even if only just so, before any new years come around, well, mostly I kind of agree with the motion, but I just like use it as an opportunity to just. Escape from reality just for one day. And sometimes just one day of positive vibes is all you really need to, like, get back into the swing of it. Alright. Do I have enough to make a shovel or do I gotta really go back into the house just to get it? Hardwood. Yep. Well, I guess anything buried in the ground is gonna have to wait until later. But with that said, like... There's a lot of fun things that happened just on like New Year's Eve before work. Like, one of the Pokemon Go content creators that I got into lately. Like, I forget her full username, but she goes by Cricket. And, like, she's probably the only Cricket in the Pokemon Go community <laughs> that I'm aware of. She had a live stream of New Year's, and because she's Australian, that happens much earlier than in all the other time zones, which results in me being. It's also been kind of being like an early work day sort of thing. Like, I could actually watch it before work. I don't think I actually talk about, like, the streaming I watch too often. But, like, typically, like, if it... Besides breakfast stream, which, like, 
technically doesn't start until after I get into work. So, like, I usually have to, but uh, I've been able to, like, at least listen into the live stream and not have to wait for the VOD to come out ever since I got unlimited data, because I'm just like, screw it, like, it's unlimited, the data's literally unlimited, I'm gonna just go ahead here and just put breakfast stream on the audio background on Twitch while I do my work in the office. And of course that's gotten even easier since I started working from home, like, I could probably even, like, type a word or two in the chat while I'm waiting for certain things to render to and work. Like, IRL loading times. We'll leave it at that. But typically, like, before breakfast stream and when I actually wake up in the morning, the only two people that are really even up are... Patty... Patty, uh, those of you who've been in the LP community for a long time might know him better as Pico with an extension of fours. But I don't know if he does YouTube stuff anymore, but he's been on the live stream scene quite a bit. And honestly, like, a lot of times the like, games that he plays doesn't exactly match up with the games I'm interested in watching. But it's always nice when they do, and I'm actually able to just, like... Especially when I just need something to distract me from the news that I'm inevitably playing because other people in my household like to have, like, a news thing going on in the background. It's always nice to have, like, one of his streams just to put in my ears while I'm just trying to make breakfast and not get distracted by all the other stuff in the world and that. And cross trigger, yeah. One of the big things I've been enjoying, I'm not sure if he finished it because I, again, like, I only get to see his streams in the morning. When I'm working, when I'm trying to get ready for work in the morning, there's this like game that apparently has been out for a little while, but recently came to Steam called uh, Cross Stream or something. It's it's got a really interesting concept and a nice character design. And that's kind of part of the reason why I'm I've been really interested in picking it up myself. But again, like it's so hard to get myself to actually buy games because I rarely get to play them. <laughs> And you could say, like, well, Jackie K, if you're, that's how you feel, then why don't you just, instead of watch other people play video games, play video games in that time frame instead? Here's a here's a little insane secret in all, though. Majority of the time, when I'm playing game, when I'm watching people play games, I'm multitasking. I'm doing other things at the same time, like, eh, editing a video... It, I know, like, it seems kind of weird for some people to, tr to edit while watching other content. It depends on, for me personally, it depends on the type of editing I do. Like, if I'm if there, I'm just making some cuts, and I know I don't have to listen to, to it while I'm editing, then I can do it. But if it's something like editing a podcast especially, I often find myself in a situation where I can't really edit, edit it while listening. Like, I have to either turn the volume of what I'm watching down really low, or pause it while I'm editing the audio part of that. I guess mostly just like what if I'm applying effects or making cuts. Those are the time periods that I work best with multitasking, with listening to content and recording or editing and watching other people's content. Well, with all the running around I was doing, that's going to happen eventually. But yeah, tangent after tangent after tangent. Cross Triggers was the name of the game I was thinking of. I've been really wanting to get it up because, like, as a, I really like the art style. It's like, it's got one of those SNES like styles, but modernized. And that's honestly, like, my favorite type of art style these days. Where it's just like, it's kind of picks, it's kind of, it's not like 3D models, it's, it's kind of sprite-like. I know some people consider sprite work an outdated concept from the past, but not me. I actually like enjoy it more than 3D art and a lot of other types of art more times. Like, I, it's kind of like I, if I actually had the time to watch television, I probably would get into anime. Because like, majority of the time that art style is like right up my alley. That's, that's the type of way I like to enjoy my visual media. 
But yeah, cross trigger just seems like real nice. It's a little intimidating with like just how many factors there is to it, but I can't help but be impressed with just how many different factors there are to it. Oh man, and speaking of cross triggers, like I kind of just realizing there's a lot of games that I need to catch up on eventually. Like I told Scott Pilgrim vs. the World is going to be re-released. And if you know anything about the history of that game, just like, for example, the part of the time frame of just how how long it's just been in, like, unreleased heck. Because of all the licensing shenanigans that was involved in making it in the first place. The fact that it's getting a re-release at all is a miracle in of itself, and I wasn't fortunate enough to pick it up right the first time. I was really on the seat to doing so, but, like, I kept coming up with excuses. So I'm going to make sure I actually pick that up this time it comes around. And, and I kind of, I don't know if I want to address it. I'm not quite sure exactly, like, how the money works with, like, resells and all that. Um, you can hate me later, but I'm just going to play Ignorance is Bliss. Like, it's the only way I can really get it, and it's not like you're illegally getting it. But, like, that game's art the whole reason I got in this tangent was this, that game's art style is just so amazing. And it does seem like video game fans delight. Like, the movie was basically made... The movie was off of a comic series that was made, tailor-made for video game fans. And, like, the game kind of just emulates that even more than the movie did. Because the movie was live-action, well, this is all kind of just, like, its own pixel art style thing. And it's just really, like, the art style and the music really stand out in particular. And it's like a 2B fighter, which isn't, you wouldn't think it's my type of genre, because I haven't really played games with it. Um, yeah, I, I feel like it's changed since then, but the problem is, like, I like so many different music genres. And I picked Chiptune because I do have, like, a, a preference towards video game soundtracks, and it's kind of just a situation where I like... Oh. The music is nice. Things that kind of have more of a video game like vibe to it, chiptune being one of them, are things that kind of especially appeal to me. Even though there's like other things I'm kind of finding out liking, like I think I might actually have a soft stuff spot for like synth music. I think it's called. It's kind of like the what the music that usually complements the piano music in Celeste soundtracks. It kind of just gives me the right type type of vibe that I want to have. And... What else? I mean, I've always had a soft spot for classic music, but it's usually the type of music I only listen to when I need to relax. Like, I listen to it all the time as I'm going to bed, and went back when I was actually driving to work and back, and I had a really stressful day. Occasionally I would, like, pop the... Our local radio station's classic station, and just listen to that for a little bit. Similar thing with jazz. If for some reason I need a little bit more energy than what classical provides, I'll just hop over to the local's jazz station and listen to that instead. Wow, wow, tangent, tangent. Cross Trigger. Point being, like, if I had unlimited time, Cross Trigger would definitely be a game I picked up and play. And I think that's the name of it, but I got this. The nagging feeling in my gut that tells me that I might be misremembering it. Hopefully not. Not to put more work on myself in editing, but maybe... This is a big deal. If I'm misremembering it, I really should at least make note of it in some shape or form. Oh, cool. I think I actually got the gold armor from another place, so now I should be able to make gold armor, because I'm pretty sure you need iron armor in order to make gold iron.
Sorry, I was just having a moment there. <laughs> so I think if I might as well, like, backtrack to what I've been doing lately, because otherwise we're never going to finish that. So much for worrying about this not being long enough. But, like, so first point being, like, Friday, maybe, like, there's a little bit of bad feelings in my mojo. Maybe it was just being tired from being up to like 1.30 in the morning for New Year's Eve. Because like I kind of like, it's probably like the best New Year's Eve. Let me backtrack to New Year's Eve for just a second. Best New Year's Eve I had in a long time. Which is kind of weird considering like everything should have made things seem like this is the worst New Year's Eve ever. But just between like having Animal Crossing and checking out that New Year's event like. Just the family having, like, pretty much all my favorite finger foods all in one place, including, like, a chocolate fountain. And... Okay, we had the punch. That's the big thing. Like, I... the punch with, like, the Mountain Dew and the fruit punch and ice cream and other factors together, that's one of my favorite things about New Year's. And I don't think we really had that last year. And then I got, like, to have all that stuff while watching Stephen and Mel do their own little live stream. It was just like a perfect combination of factors. Shoot, did I accidentally sell the pill bug instead of, uh, glorious? So, point being, like, New Year's Eve was nice, though New Year's Day I didn't really do too much besides Sketch. Sketch play video games, which is nice to actually play video games just for the fun of it, for reasons I had been explaining earlier. And I guess I also helped bring in wood for the fireplace that we have. That was long overdue, but my folks finally got that, got the four-wheeler that we used to bring the wood over fixed. So we're able to like load up the porch and the house with that sort of stuff. Well, no, no, no. I'll actually take it later. I only have that in my planner because like the four wheeler wasn't fixed at the time. So instead, I decide to just walk, man, go over to where we had it stacked up, walk over, put as much of my arms as I can, and then bring it back to the porch just so there would be a little bit of something. And then immediately the following day, we actually took the time to load up the porch, thanks to having the four-wheeler working, so that kind of just negated all that. But it wasn't too long. Like, it was just for, like, one second while I had the dog out, I think. Something similar to that. Yeah. And Friday... Friday was the outing day, like... It felt like a little too soon from the last time I actually went out and did groceries and all that. But we made it work out. Like, it wasn't too bad. Because I got to go walk at one of the parks that has a good amount of stuff to do in Pokemon Go. I just wanted to go out swimming, even though my controller clearly doesn't want me to go out swimming. It's been way too long since we've actually had a proper diving se session and all that. So I got the groceries, even got some lunch while I was out. Apparently, apparently I took care of the animals, which mostly just means like going, taking care of the cow, taking care of some of the cows that we have, or just feeding some them some food. Feeding the cats. I don't think I've ever actually showed the, the barn cats. They're technically not our cats, but they do come over here a lot because we leave food out for them. And one, one of them super friendly because my dad actually nursed it from how nursed it back to health after like a little incident that resulted in the litter getting really sick. Maybe I'll just leave it at that. Yeah. I might end up cutting a bit of that out because like it's a little hard to ex I don't usually talk about the barn cast too much because like it borders right on the line between family life and my life 
and a lot of family life stuff I kind of think is too personal. But long story short, barn cats are cute. They're technically not ours, but we still leave food out for them. In fact, I buy the cat food majority of the time. So, like, usually if I'm over there to, for some other reason, I just bring the cat food, bring some cat food out for them. The hope is that there's a and there's a few more cats than we would have liked. There's basically only one that anyone in our family cares about anymore, and that's Kitty. She's one. Her litter had a little incident that made them get real sick, and my dad nursed her back to health. So she's basically like a domesticated cat, where like all the other barn cats will run off if you try to approach them. Kitty will actually come up to you. Let you pet her and play with her, and basically anything a normal cat would do. Oh, hey, it's been a while since I've seen your face. Ah, uh, sure. I don't even know if I ever donate a scallop to a museum because usually I find just one and Pastel just takes it. But I mean, eventually I'll get two scallops in a single day, and Pastel does have good things to say. And give you good things if I recall. Feel this. If molecules are made from atoms, if atoms are made from even smaller things, like how deep does this go? Wrap your noodle around that. Yeah, maybe it just gives you a recipe the first time. Ah oh, well. Anyways, I'm tangenting to Mars and back. And I, don't, I even have less stuff to talk about today than usual. Like, nothing's really changed with the streaming since the last time we did a game and chill. Not too much as... The big, only major thing that's changed with podcasts is that I'm trying to do them more often. Or I'm trying to, like, actually start building a bulk of podcasts. So, expect to see editorials. And not just, like, the casual Pokemon Go Fireside chat more often this month because... Well, you've seen already, because I just realized that I'm still planning on uploading this game and chill later on in the month. But if all goes well, I'll have a backlog, so we actually like get more than casual Pokemon Go Fireside chat and game and chills. I even have a few topics already written up for those sorts of editorials. It's just a matter of taking the time to sit down and record them. And I think we've even been over why that takes a little bit more time than some of the other content I edit, because, like, I, it's a lot, a lot harder to multitask it. Like, a lot of times, instead of actually drawing or editing something while watching a video someone else made, I'll often just, like, listen back to my own podcast and multitask between editing that and doing a drawing, just as the easiest example. And I think that's all I can really recall. If I can think of something else, I'll add in an art block, because, like, it's way too early in the month to record an art block now. I've only done the one sketch, like, I think I said several times already. So we'll go over that when it's more of a proper time to do so. So... I think I, like, bounced around a lot over the place, but I think I covered the major things that happened on Saturday. Sunday was kind of another one of those easy days where I kind of felt kind of eh, hard to get myself to do anything. But I did like do a tiny part of cleaning my room by clean, which I mean like take all the clothes out of my dresser and reorganize them. At least it's more a bit more than what I would typically do when I'm cleaning. That's just like clear all the junk off the floor and the table desk. Like I like working in a clean space. I just have a hard time putting the time aside to do so because I get myself so busy with like if I have time to work on projects if I have time to clean I have time to work on projects it's kind of the problem I run into a bit but again like, I think Sunday was the day we actually sat down and brought a bunch of wood over to the house and I did, did go through GBL all of that I don't normally edit video thumbnails, but like I finally sat down and just did a batch of Pokemon Go Battle League thumbnails, so it's not just your generic 
thumbnail for a couple weeks. That should be fun. And I finally got around to editing some of the live stream videos. Like, exporting them from Twitch to YouTube. Clipping and making little adjustments like that over on Twitch as needed. Yeah, I'm not sure if there's like something else I needed to do, talk about, but I guess I could jump over to yesterday while I'm thinking about it. Because I think s yesterday might have been another one of those days where I'm kind of just like, mm. But I did go up for a nice walk. I think that's the thing, like, it seemed like every other day I couldn't even get myself out of the house. I wasn't feeling motivated enough to do so. But I did, that did remind me that despite that Sunday, I did have <laughs> quite a Pokemon Go experience. Like, I found, like, over this weekend I found, like, two Shinies from the New Year's event. That maybe I can, like, clip in the art block. Like, I got a Shiny Pikachu from the New Year's event and the Shiny Slowbro. And I don't know what it is about Winter, but it feels like I'm having the best Shiny luck over on Winter. Got a couple Froakies just on that day I was at the house. And didn't go out. And there was a Noivat, but man, the game really made me work for the Noivat. Like, it was showing up on nearby, even though I was at home. But it was not pop up. I went outside, took the dog for a walk just around the backyard to try to find it. It still wouldn't pop up. So I... The dog wanted to go back inside anyways. So I kind of went for a walk a little further. Like went over to the barn. Still no Noivat. And it's like, ugh, it's over on the neighbor's place, isn't it? So I decided to go walk on the side of the road. Like, off the road off the shoulder, but like our, we're, we're old enough that we don't actually have sidewalks, so it's, it's, I didn't walk on the road, I walked off the road, but it was close enough to the road that it's kind of like, ah, I wouldn't do this unless there was something really good coming out of it. Thankfully, I just had to go a tiny bit past where our backyard is, and before I even got to the neighbor's place, the Noivat showed, showed up. So at least I finally got that sucker, and I can start walking it for 20 million years until I get the 400 candy needed to evolve it into, yeah. I don't know what it is with Niantic and their freaking shiny stuff. Or making, like, the Pokemon that don't deserve to t be so hard to power up. Take so much to power up. It is what it is, though. Maybe we'll, like, get an event that, like, spawns Noivas like crazy. Probably not until, like, a, quite a few years later. But I assume eventually I'll get the candies needed for it. And hopefully a better IV Noivat before then. Well, that story out of the way. Maybe I should at least start getting back into... The, what's been going on lately. I guess another thing, I didn't make it a New Year's Revolution, but I started reading, like, actual books. Nothing, like, too crazy. It's all, like, non-fiction stuff. One of it was a book that I've had since college. I technically read it as part of, like, the curriculum for my game design classes, but, like, it caught my interest and I've been wanting to revisit it. So, there was a couple days this weekend that I just started my day before even turning on my phone or checking anything, I just read a few pages of the book. There was also another book that I read one of those days. It's really weird to try to describe. It's like along the title of How to Do Nothing. And I know that seems a little weird, but it is kind of what it sounds like. Where It's kind of... The narrative of it seems to go all over the place. I don't know, I barely... I haven't got past chapter one of it yet. But for the process of it, I hope to actually like learn some things to like make my experience as an online creator a little bit better. Just in, along the concept of like being able to separate. I guess I had room. I didn't think I had room with all the stuff I was picking up, but sure. 
Hey everyone, Jackie K from the Not Distant Past here. I figure because I've been rambling a lot, as is in this video, I redo this particular section of the commentary to make it a little more abridged and to the point, because I ramble on this book a lot longer than I thought I would. It's called How to Do Nothing, Resisting the Attention of Comedy by Jenny Oldeal. There's some abstract elements to it that make it a little difficult to describe, but in its most basic form, it's a psychological book meant to help you reevaluate the way you think of while doing nothing. The importance of stepping away when the world is constantly driving you to be as efficient with your time as possible, do as much as you can, and be as productive as you possibly can imagine. I decided to buy it because a while back there was a podcast that was interviewing the author of this book on a similar topic. I liked the concepts that were talked about in the interview, so I thought it'd be useful for me to pick up a book like this. I haven't gotten very far in it, but between what I've heard and what I've read, I would highly recommend it to any of my peers watching this video. I think it could be a very useful tool for mental health in an era where social media is so prominent. I think it could be especially useful in the content creator sphere just because of how demanding it can be. It looks like it has some room to be a little political, but it's only to emphasize some of the main themes of the book. So far in like the first 10 pages, it's made me evaluate why I do the things I do, understand the importance of nature, and just taking a step back and appreciating the things that are easy to overlook. I guess I can talk more about it as I continue to read it, because as recording this game and chill, I decided, you know what, why not? A whole year to read one book, how bad could it possibly be? I'm going to read this book before the end of 2021. So, more on that as it's relevant, onwards back with the show. If you're the type of person that's like sick of capitalism, there's definitely things you can get from this book. If you're the type of person that just wants to relax, there's things you can get from this book. If you're the type of person that's just obsessed over social media and just don't know how to step away from it, there's things you can take away from this book. It covers like a lot, it's all over the place, but I feel like it does cover a lot of different positive aspects. There's, or should I say, there's a lot of things you can take away from it to help improve your life for the better. I'm gonna just end off here, like, I feel like I was all over the place and didn't exactly... I feel like I missed some topics, but I feel that way about every game in chill. So... You know what? For our block today, I haven't really had a chance to do any digital drawings. And I did get a brand new sketchbook for Christmas, so you might be able to see here. So, I figured I'd show it off. I mean, it's... I figured no one to use and my old sketchbook isn't full yet, but since this is a bigger sketchbook, I figure I save this for things I do at home and save the smaller one for portable sketching and all that. And considering <laughs> uh, I'll be, I'm home a lot with working from home and all that, I've been doing all my sketching in this sketchbook for the month. I also think I want to take a little time to talk about the progress I made in the book since the last, since I last recorded a game show. So this is the first page, just a bunch of little like mini drawings and a lot of practice of the simpler art style, even though my art style normally is simple to begin with. And I, you see some pages where I take advantage of the bigger size of it, and it's got a, like a whole front side and back of one of my characters. Now I'll talk a little bit more about this. But I want to at least give a special shout out to a page that I've been doing, like a site. There was one day that I just wasn't feeling up to being creative so I just Spent a lot of time looking up tutorials and actually practicing doing art in a more detailed style. And one of these arrows down here, I'm especially proud of. Like, that one, this one I tried, but didn't quite top this one. Not sure if we can get a good view without making it completely horizontal. But here we go. And if I'm not, if I'm not already editing so much as is, I might just add a clip of that one photo but I'm really proud of how this one came out I mean like eh, I could use some work with the chess area but everything else is just fantastic and 
I did that early on in the month, I'm surprised I haven't been able to replicate it. And I guess I almost overlooked all the little, like, ribbon doodles and peachy doodles I did on the side there for that page. I'm kind of getting to the point where I'm getting the reference pages. So, like, one of the characters I want to just, like, get a bit more practice in before doing her reference page. Just considering, like, I... I specifically, like... My, my inspiration for making the character was to, like, get me more practice drawing wheelchairs in the same position. I think, like, this came out pretty good. Like, the wheels look a little weird, but I'm pretty happy with how everything else in the post came out. And... Man, I'm pretty happy about this. This was Jenna from Golden Sun. I was just browsing Twitter one day and saw some... saw a retweet of someone doing the Golden Sun girls like wearing each other's outfits. And that kind of inspired me to do something with Jenna of like giving her sheep as clothing and with the whole I don't, I don't even know what's up with going out with Sheba but like I know that she has like the thing around the chest and I guess that's a scarf and the cape going along the back and the boots it's kind of a funny thing like a lot of them, like my characters for Overseer of the Elements were inspired off of Golden Sun characters but, eh, I like, feel like I've been trying to push their designs more and more into the original ideas. And I think I owe a lot to that, to just how I misinterpreted Golden Sun designs, the design of the Golden Sun characters when I was younger. Because, like, the way that Sarah, one of the, the characters I showed earlier, hair is, I was trying to replicate Jenna's in the early day. And, because... I had the misinterpretations, but I just ran with it. But it's kind of just like a running theme. Also, while I'm on this page, this is like... Eh, I still have some work to do, but this is the reference page. The first re reference page I'm doing for this book. Like, I got the like the basic like front side and back and that, but... The rest of this page is going to be like dynamic poses, and if I have room, I'm going to like include character bio there. If not, I'll like make a note of it somewhere else. But yeah, like it feels like a lot of my originality actually came from just misinterpreting the way other people do it, do things. And uh, this next page I'm a little hesitant to show off because like there's a lot of, I think I'm just going to talk about a lot of it next month. Because like when I can like give a better lore drum dump. But I want to showcase this one because <laughs> I've been watching Lukachin's LP of Super Mario RPG. And they kind of just have this running joke of just commenting about Jaffa, one of the monsters you fight in the game. It's like a red tomato, <laughs> shape of a red tomato, and like every time you start a battle, it goes, Jaffa is sleeping. And when you hit it, Jaffa is awake. <laughs> and it's just like the dialogue that got so repetitive that that came out in the process. So yeah. Remind me next month, and I'll talk a little bit more about the rest of this page. But for right now, I just kind of want to leave it as is. I will give you a little hint about what's going on. Like, these, that page and this page are mostly just like practices. Like, I spend a lot of time drawing my characters, but like, this fan world of mine is actually more of a fan game series or a game, a dream game series. So I wanted to do more dynamic stuff with it, like, instead of just drawing characters, I wanted to push, like, drawing them doing things that, like, express the ideas of plot and mechanics of the game world somewhere besides my head. So, this project's just about just drawing them and drawing out various mechanics of the game is what I'm trying to say. You know, I'll just pause <laughs> the here and keep talking from there so I don't keep wasting don't have to exhaust myself holding my phone upwards as is. So these past couple sketches and probably a couple more I make in the future are to help me lay out a concept known as team attacks for this fan slash dream game. 
So for example, as you see in this shot, two of the characters, Jay and Sarah, are teaming up together to combine their abilities to wield water and fire respectfully to summon a fog, which as you may suspect, helps the party avoid taking damage from attacks and, and or similar things. And the balance, like I said, this is all ideas in my head, so I'm still working out the balancing. And that's all I got for drawing, so I'll probably spend the rest of Art Block explaining a little bit more about how the team attacks work in Elm of the Overseer. Hopefully no one minds, like, I've been itching to like express and share more of the idea for several years. Actually, several years is still a bit of an understatement. I could easily say a couple decades and still not be wrong. I mostly kept it to myself because I wanted to keep refining it and because I wanted to make sure that the idea wasn't shared until I could actually do something with it on the rare chance that like someone took it for some random reason. But I'm starting to get to the age where it would hurt me if I went my entire life without sharing it to some degree so I'd rather share it by talking about the ideas I have rather than just keep it to myself until I reach my deathbed. So, here we go. But essentially how it works is... This fan game of mine kind of pulls from several games that I was inspired by growing up. With all the like offhand talk about Golden Sun, I guess it's kind of obvious that Golden Sun is one of them. But I've also got inspirations from Mario RPG. And in the early days of these ide the idea of the series, it's going to be like a cross blend between Mario RPG and the Golden Sun series where you got the mechanics of class building and puzzle solving from Golden Sun with the action oriented elements from the Mario and Luigi series. But as time's going on I've kind of pulled inspirations from other things. One thing I can say without fear of spoilers is the social bonding element to the whole battle slash gameplay of Element of the Overseer that, as you might guess, is inspired by the Persona series, specifically 4 because that's the one I played. Though it also like takes little ties from how the tail scheme take handles this character's interactions. A little weird, but <laughs> I never actually played a tail scheme. But I did watch Miss Anel's LP of Tales of Vesperia, so I'm do enjoy the world and the characters from that playthrough at the very least. But tangent aside, as characters spend time with each other in battles and maybe a few instances outside of battle as well, their experience with each other grows. Once the experience is high enough to level up via Tales of Vesperia style, a notification pops up on the screen, you press a button, and you trigger a little cutscene with them interacting with each other. This also ties into one way that I'm trying to improve Elm and the Overseer over Golden Sun, where Golden Sun has a lot of dialogue and it's engaging, gives you a lot of details about the world, but it is a really in your face and a real relic of the olden times. So the concept of like being able to trigger social conversations at your will with a press of a button, kind of tying back to the concept that I'm trying to like mainstream the Golden Sun element of dialogue, where you still get all the good without all the bad from that those particular games. But back on team attacks, once you finish that conversation, their social bond levels up and at certain levels they'll gain new abilities that they can pull off together. Now if you're familiar with Golden Sun, just take the battle system of Golden Sun and replace some of them with team attacks and you got a general gif of what I'm kind of picturing. For those that don't know Golden Sun, long story short, Throughout your adventure, you collect little characters known as Dingy or the Jin. One of those two pronunciations is correct. I always go with the Jin, though. Anyways, sometimes you have to fight them. Sometimes they join you after solving a puzzle. But either way, once they do, they become aligned with one of your party members, and you can change which party members the Jins hang out with at will. Not only does this increase your stats, but certain combinations of Jins on certain party members will completely change their stats resulting in a different basically a completely different assortment of stats and different moves and abilities 
In addition, you can use the gins in battle as well. And they have a wide variety of side effects. Some of the best gins in Golden Sun include ones that like basically negate your any damage you take in an entire turn. So they get some pretty busted abilities in of themselves. But in addition, after you use them, they go into a standby state. Now when they're standby, it's kind of like they don't exist. So stats boost you gain. If you loot, if you put too many on standby, you may even lose like the class combination you've been building up to temporarily until you put them back on set. But to really make the most out of them, instead of putting them on set right away, you can summon them. If you're familiar with more traditional RPGs, this is where the powerful summons from those games come in. After the summon is used, they're put into a temporary recovery state, but eventually go back to being set, and the cycle repeats. Now the cool thing about the Golden Sun system is, not only can you change your class on the fly, through creative use of setting and putting the gins on standby, but you can also pull off summons before they're ready if you pay close attention to turn order and make the proper moves. For example, let's say there's a summon that requires 4 earth Jenny, but you only have 3. While in most RPGs you'd be out of luck, in Golden Sun you can still pull this off if you have your slowest party member still go for the summon, but have your fastest party member use the earth Jenny. Using it puts it on standby, so you have 4 on standby by the time the summon takes place. I try to condense that as much as I can to my fear of glancing over certain details, but I feel like just understanding how the summons work is important to actually understand the comparison and contraction to the team attack system of Element of the Overseer. Originally I was going to have a system where you still had the summons like in Golden Sun and the team attack would run off like this game's equivalent of magic points. But as the time's gone by, I one, didn't want to overwhelm myself with too many various mechanics on the off chance I ever get a chance to make this game. And two, I was realizing I was missing out on a perfect opportunity to not only differentiate my game from Golden Sun, but possibly make it more balanced too. Because a big thing in Golden Sun is as I was saying before, you can do as many summons as you have Dingy available. So you, if you have enough on standby, you can unleash the most powerful summon multiple times in a single turn. And considering you can like set and standby them outside of the battle as you please, it's very easy to set up some, a situation right before you go into a boss fight to do just that. It's commonly known as the Golden Sun community as summon rushing. With the team attack system, I have a unique opportunity to make the players think even more about the pros and cons versus going for a summon, or team attack in this case, versus going for a normal spell, or even a normal attack. A big part of this is that because they're team attacks, they require multiple party members to pull off. So while you could hypothetically do four summons in one turn, at most you could do two team attacks in a single turn, and you also wouldn't have an opportunity to heal if you went for two team attacks. In addition, with the social bonding system, and the team attacks you learn along the way, I'm hoping to create an opportunity for each team attack to stand out in its own way, not just be an offensive powerhouse for that particular element. Hence like Jay and Sarah being able to create a fog. Obviously the reward for completing the bond between two characters in the game would most likely be a super powerful attack, but those steps in between I want to make unique as well, hence like inspiring to do team attacks that do more than just do damage. I know like Golden Sun, the summons do more than damage, but even if a summon has a good side effect, you're usually summoning specifically to get as much raw damage out as possible. And with how many different team abilities there's gonna be to reward the player for actually interacting with the lore of the game, I need to do something to make them special, otherwise people are just gonna focus on the ability with the most power for that particular element. And there isn't a reason to engage with certain pairs of characters if they don't lead up to something special. From a gameplay standpoint, if I ever get a chance to make a game, I'm gonna I really wanna make sure that I spread out the backstory and lore, taking inspiration from more modern games that do various things like data logs you pick up along the way. And kind of what I was saying of Tales with Speria, where there's optional conversations you can have with a press of a button. Worth knowing that, like, 
if something comes up in an area where you could engage in an optimal conversation, there would be incentive to check that out, because if it involves certain characters, it would build up the experience between them. That's one of the examples of outside of battle I was alluding to before. But man, I'm kind of rambling on this. I think I got at least the basic ideas of why the team attack system is going to exist in this hypothetical game. So thanks for letting me chew off your ear a little. I'll let you get back to the video proper. That said, like, I'm about to end off here, so only other thing I really want to talk about since the last game show recording was the progress I made on that book that I promised. I'm a little past halfway through the month, and I just finished the first chapter. Yeah, I'm kind of been reading fairly slowly. It's not even that I read slow, I've just been putting that little time into it. But it's been an interesting read so far. Looks like chapter 2 goes a little bit more to specifically why we need to be around real people and not completely include to the computer and technology, which I always find those sections of conversation a little cringe. I get why they exist. I get the good of it. But I could like go into my own rant of just why I've always preferred interactions on this sort of platform over face to face, even before pandemic times. But that would turn into a rant of itself. Maybe we can talk about the next game and show if I remember. Also, it looks like it was only going into that lecturing for maybe like a couple pages, and it's getting more general and more just I can understand this angle. I can relate to this angle after that little section. So like I doubt I'm even gonna like hate the rest of the chapter. That said, I don't even think there's that much gameplay left to share, so why don't I just end off here? I've been Jackie K, thanks for checking out this game and chill. Sorry if I ended up chewing your ear for a long period of time, eluding the promise of a half hour episode and extending it out to 50 minutes. But I never get a chance to really talk about Element of the Overseer. When I do, I'm always just focused on drawing the characters. So I saw an opportunity and I seized it. I do got plans to share these ideas in ways that are better than just rambling on a video about it. Like, I've been sitting on this channel on Twitter to share art and go into those details of the game. I've been meaning to update my website for a section that I could just talk about it there. It's just a matter of finding the time to do so, so I guess stay tuned if for some reason you actually liked that rambling. Okay, before I go on another tangent, see y'all later. Take care.